What is purgatory? Heaven, as we have said, is perfect communion with God. But we can only reach that perfect communion with God if we are sanctified and holy. For in the presence of God, there can't be any imperfection or the least clinging to sins. To reach heaven, therefore, we have to be holy. Now, we are sanctified in baptism. We become children of God, and on account of grace, we can begin our way towards holiness and perfection. But this path towards perfection, we usually walk pretty imperfectly, as our sins and failures clearly show. If we then repent of our sins and confess them in the sacrament of reconciliation, we are forgiven. We are restored to God and can now return to the right path. Good. But repentance and confession are just two steps needed to leave sin behind there still remains something that needs to be rectified. To illustrate, if I steal money from a friend, then regret it and ask his forgiveness, then that's good. But even if he forgives me, there's still something that needs to be done. Justice demands that I rectify the wrong. In this case, I will certainly have to return the money. I can't just say, thanks for forgiving me, uh, now let's see where I can get a new TV. No, I have to try to repair the damage. And maybe I would even try to do something that shows the authenticity of my remorse and restores the trust to our friendship. And this actually is the case with all sins. Even after we have repented and confessed them, we have to try to repair the damage we have done and do penance. In addition to this, sins always leave behind some kind of disorder and a problematic attachment to created things. And this does not disappear automatically just because we repent of our sins. You can see this especially with sins that have become a habit. We may repent sincerely, but it is still necessary, even after repenting, to fight the bad habit and inclination to sin. So we see that sins, even those already repented, have consequences. These consequences demand, first of all, reparation and atonement. And secondly, the disorder that sins have caused must be overcome. Acts of penance help in both cases. What are acts of penance? Well, there is, of course, the penance that we receive in confession. And there are other works of penance, such as prayer, fasting, or patiently enduring a difficult or painful situation. By the way, just to be clear, our penitential acts don't take anything away from the fact that Christ atoned for our sins. On the contrary, our penitential acts have an effect only because of Christ. Since it was on the cross that He merited all those graces that make our acts truly a path of holiness. All right. That was a lot about sin and its consequences. What does all this have to do with purgatory? As we will see now, a lot. It's like this. If we repent our sins and atone for them, then we will have truly left them behind, and we can stand pure and holy before God and enter into heaven. However, if there is something, for instance, something minor that we have not repented of, or something that has not been atoned for, something disordered that we still cling to, then that must be purified. And this purification happens in purgatory. Purgatory is the place of the purification of souls. All those souls that are united to God in charity, but still don't have the perfect love they need for complete union with God, go to purgatory. They will enter the kingdom of God once they are purified.